yes, welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about resizing images in Photoshop. And before you hit the back uh, button and leave, there are some interesting things about resizing images in Photoshop that you might not know about. Plus, we'll try to keep it nice and short here. Hey, look, is that Drake? Um, before we jump into the tutorial, I want to let you guys know I'm finally selling two tutorial bundles over on tutvid.com. I've taken the best of the best of my tutorials. I've bundled up uh, a bunch of the advanced Photoshop tutorials into an advanced Photoshop bundle and a bunch of the retouching ones into a big retouching touching bundle. There's some annotations here on the screen. You can go check them out. I've priced them nice and affordably. Plus, they support tutvid.com, which is super cool. So I can just keep on cranking out this free content for you guys just about every day uh, and hopefully make it better and better and better. So that's cool. Go check it out. I highly recommend it. Um, so we've got this image of the CN Tower here. Here's some ways we can resize the image. First and foremost, grab the crop tool. You can manually punch in a width and height here and then you know go into crop mode, hit enter, return, boom, you have an image that's been resized to 1400 by 1000. So that's great. I'm going to undo that, however, because I don't want to resize the image quite like that. I can also go to my rectangular marquee tool. I can choose to fix uh, I can choose fixed size from the style drop down menu and let's say I need my image to be 1280 by 676. I can hover over whatever part of the image I need. I can go image, crop, and there we go. Our image has been sized down to 1280 by 676. Uh, again, I don't want to do it that way. Let's talk about the most powerful of the features, image, image size right here. Note the hotkey, command option I, that would be control alt I on the PC. Um, I don't think this is a hotkey that I set. I think this is default in Photoshop. Either way, if it isn't, you're going to want to go and set a hotkey because it's so nice as you're working to just be able to boom, command, option, or control, alt, I, and get your image size dialog box. Now, you can drag and look at different parts of your image in this little preview. This little box out here allows you to select different parts of your image to quickly jump to uh, if for some reason you're previewing it in your image size dialog box. Um, this little cogwheel here, uh, scale, scale styles, this has to do with any layer styles you might have. This is important because if you have a huge drop shadow, let's say under a big piece of text or something, uh, and you scale your image to like half the size, that drop shadow is now going to look twice as large because it's still big enough for that original image. If you check on scale styles, all of your layer styles and all those live effects are going to scale with your image, whether you're going up or whether you're going down. So that's really cool. Dimensions here. This is just the output uh, in which you read, uh, you know, basically the output of the image, where it is now. It's not going to change the way you resize the image. Let's say you, you're changing pixels, but you want to read it as a percentage. So the client says, you know, I want it taken down to like 75% of where it is, and you're just checking on some sizes. Um, you know, you can take it down to like 3,700 or something and see, hey, wow, it's 73.05%. We're pretty close there. You know, we could try 3,800, 75.02%. Cool. That might be where we want to live. I'm going to hold down my alter option key here and hit reset. That's not the best way because um, you can always just go percent and choose 75% um, but just know you have the option of reading the dimensions which you're resizing to uh, a little bit differently uh, if you don't want to read pixels for whatever reason. There are a bunch of presets in here if you just want to size it or fit it to a specific uh, preset size, whether or not it's like legal or letter sized paper or any one of these different um, uh, resolutions in here, that's great. Of course, you can manually punch in your width and height. The little chain icon, just make sure that they are um, uh, proportionate. So if that's turned on, as you change the, the width, the height is going to change to match. If not, you can see I can set this to like 1200 and the height's still going to be 400 and I'm going to get this very stretched very flying saucerish looking uh, image. I'm going to go ahead and reset the dialogue again. Um, of course, we can change the units in which we actually change the, the image size. So if we don't want to edit pixels, but in fact want to edit percentage, we can do that. No worries. Now down here, we can change the resolution of the image. And this brings up something interesting, and that's the resample option. So when resample is changed on, when we change the image size of something in Photoshop, we're really just resampling the image. Um, if we shut off resampling, you can see I can't change the pixels. I can change inches and percent. And that's because when resample is shut off, this is telling you how big an image is going to be if you were to print it right here. This is more like document size, not image size, if you will. Um, in fact, I think Photoshop used to call this the document size um, when you would shut off resampling. There'd be like a little text thing that would change or something. I don't know, whatever. Point is, if we change the resolution from a very like shallow, loosey-goosey, bad print resolution of 72 uh, pixels per inch to something like 300 pixels per inch, you can see that we no longer have a 70-inch wide print, but like a 17-inch wide print. So we have a 17-inch by 11-inch photo, basically, is what this would print at, at a resolution of 300 or 150, we get a 33 by 22. That's not too bad. 
Um, so we could go ahead and change that. And the dimensions of our image, you can see they still remain at 5,065 pixels wide by 3377 tall. We're not changing the size uh, of the image in that respect. We're just changing like the way it's going to print because we're adjusting the resolution of the image. So it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but I'm trying to explain it here in like a minute or less. We have these options here as well when we're actually resizing the image in the way that Photoshop interpolates or reinterpolates the image because pixels are being compressed and have to merge and split and you know all kinds of crazy things. So these are all the different algorithms that Photoshop has to make sure that that's done effectively and you don't have like weird lines or you know banding or things like that. I typically just ride with the bicubic for smooth gradients. It's what I do. I do know that there's like under preserved details for enlargement here. There is, yeah, this kind of cool reduced noise slider if you need that. Um, a lot of people just have it set to automatic. You can roll with automatic. I prefer bicubic smooth gradients. Um, and then with that in mind, let's go back to pixels here. And let's just resize this image to like 2048. By the way, quick side tip, 2048 wide. That's like the magic width if you want your Facebook images to look really good and not be all like funkified by Facebook for whatever reason. 2048 wide is what they love. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK and we've resized our image. So with no further ado, that's going to be it for resizing images. So for resizing images in Photoshop and all the different ways you can do it and all the different crazy technical, boring, not so cool things in the image size dialog box, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.